Hi, and welcome to Talk Straight Bible. We're your hosts, Jeremiah. And Rafina Antonetti. Hey, we're only here to do one thing. Talk straight about the Bible. No other way. No other way. No other way. Nothing the Word else. of God should be more now desired than ever before, especially because of the days we live in. Mm. I'm not going to say just time, but the days. Every day, Every day. we see things that we know need to change. Mm. The world is sleeping in the dark that the church just can't fight because it's asleep in the light, mm. said one songwriter, Keith Green. Well, he also stated, how can we be so dead when we've been so well fed? Mm. Jesus rose from the grave and you can't even get out of your bed. Well, That's pretty deep. Congratulations to you up early, 7.30, with us here on Talk Straight Bible. We welcome you, and we love the Word of God, you know, and God is just so good, Amen. and we love His Word. There's nothing more better than waking up with the Word. I talk to my wife. We talk about the Word. There's nothing better than this. Let's, let's just look at the Scripture. I'm going to read from Proverbs 6, 9. Remember, we're working on 11, but because we already spoke on 9 and 10, I just want to start there. How long will you lie there, you sluggard? Mm. Question mark. When will you get up from your sleep? Question mark. Mm. A little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to rest, and poverty will come on you like a thief, scarcity, like an armed man. Wow, think about this. Mm. Now, we know that in the New Testament, Paul uses this particular idea, being a Jew, of course. He said, "How?" He said, uh, uh, rise, in, uh, rise up out of your sleep. How long will you sleep? Mm -hmm. Wow, think about this. Arise and shine. Your light has come. My wife said the other day she quoted that from Isaiah. Arise and shine. Why? Because the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. Mm -hmm. What do we do? Can we sleep in glory? Yeah, you better believe it. We can see all the wonderful things that God has for us. And we talk about it with our friends and we get excited. And then as soon as we walk away, we get distracted because mm. we're really sleeping. One of the things about sleeping spiritually is that we forget quickly the Lord and what he says. That's what James says, right? That's what he said. You look into the mirror and as you walk away from it, you forget what you look like. Wake up, O sleeper, and Christ. <laughs> <laughs> Wake up, O sleeper, and Christ will yeah. shine upon you. Now look, who is he talking to? He's talking to those who are in the church. Paul, rise up, O sleeper, and Christ will shine on you. This sleep is not about now, watch this now, because people think that this sleep is talking about the unsaved and that they need to come out of their sleep of sin. That's not what it's talking about. He's talking to the church already. But there were people sleeping spiritually saying that, ah, you know, take a little bit of this, relax, a little bit of that. But the real reality is this. If we're sleeping spiritually, what are we doing for God? <laughs> Hallelujah. So I want you to see this. What should we do when we see people sleeping? Well, here's a little illustration. This hey. This is a good illustration of 610. It's 610. Go ahead. You had a little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to lie down and rest. And here's their parents saying, hey, you, get up. Do something. Nah, I'm good. Watch that because we become so lackadaisical. Even the flies hang around us. <laughs> <laughs> taking it easy, the remote control. Is there anything wrong with taking it easy sometime? No, no, no. But this picture is really, the flies mean she's been there for a long time. <laughs> yeah. Dirty couch, you know, it's a good illustration. But understand, if we're going to do anything for the Lord, we need to avoid the temptation to rest more beyond the point that we should. Mm. I call this illegal sleep. Mm. There's legal sleep where God says you need to rest. Even, even Jesus saw his disciples when they were working with him. Mm -hmm. And he said, come with me away by yourselves and get some rest. But as you know, when they got to that place, there was a, a multitude of people there waiting for Jesus. 
And he says, look at these people. They look like sheep scattered without a shepherd. And what did he do? He began to teach them. And then he said, feed them. So there are times that we can't avoid doing things that God says, you know, you want to rest, but this is not the time. And that's the problem. We rest when it's not the time hmm. to rest. Hmm. And that's the key here. So I just want to share key, some key points that the lazy person seems to have an endless capacity for sleep. It's easy to sleep. When you're tired, I mean, get your sleep, get your rest. It's important. But the philosophy behind this is that, hey, it's morning. You should get up and do something. Mm -hmm. Now, some people work all night, so they sleep during the day. Mm -hmm. Understandable. But then if, if your night is your day, do something for God. Otherwise, poverty will come upon you like a thief, like an armed man. Let me tell you something. Lack of daysickleness is armed with this. I'm going to take from you what you don't deserve. Mm. See, when you're sleeping, you're off guard. You're off guard. Mm. And that's when the enemy comes in and he bombards your mind with thoughts you say, where in the world did that come from? Sometimes there's some thoughts that jump into my mind. And see, you got to be a keeper, a watcher <laughs> at, at your gate, at your gate. Yes. Don't sleep at your gate. I try to keep my eye open on my gate. And as soon as a thought comes to the gate, I go, mm -mm 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 -mm. you're not coming in here. No, 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 no. And I quote a scripture. I just don't say that. I do not fight. This, this spirits, these spirits with my own philosophy. I mm -hmm. quote the word of God, just like Jesus, Jesus quoted the That's word right. of God mm -hmm. in, the, in the desert when he was fasting 40 days and 40 nights. The tempter came to him mm -hmm. and he said, if you are the son of God, because see, Jesus began to hunger after 40 days. If you are the son of God, take these stones and turn them into bread. Come on, work. <laughs> and eat. He said, man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of Thank God. You. you know that Jesus, watch this now, Jesus was quoting in the book of Deuteronomy, and this is interesting, that he quoted the last part, the first part of Deuteronomy says that God says, it was God that caused you to hunger and to thirst that you may depend on him. So what Jesus was saying don't tell me to eat because God has brought me to this place where I need to be where I am. And when he's ready, he will feed me. Mm -hmm. And after he, by the, by the way, after, after Satan cursed him, tempted him a few times, the Bible says that he left him only for a season and angels attended to Jesus. Can you imagine that? I wonder what kind of banquet that looked like. <laughs> <laughs> Come here, son of God, sit and eat. There's a time for everything, but to Amen. oversleep, Amen. evil. Amen. How long, the question is, will you sleep, O oh slugger, lying in your bed, indulging in sloth and ease? Watch it. I like, to, listen, if I can get away and get a vacation day, hey, come on. But too much of it. There's, there's people that are, I'm always vacationing. I'm stop it. Don't you know that you are putting yourself in a position that's going to come? Listen, the position is this. There's stuff that's going to come and hit us like never before. And we're going to see Christians going crazy because they're going to try to scrape up all the truth they can at the last minute. Mm. And it's not that way. It doesn't work that way. Mm. Believe me, you're going to see them going crazy. I lost everything I have. Oh, I, I, my children. What's going to happen when these things do happen? What are you going to do? What's going to be your response in the midst of this crisis? That's why I'm studying all I can now. <laughs> a brother, a little bit of this and a little bit of that just posted a heart sleeping. What will you do when these things happen? A slug. A slug, yes. Yeah. A slug sleeping. You know, what will you do, though, when these things happen? It's coming, folks. Look around you. We are living in an antichrist world. This world is not our home. Even the psalmist says it. I am a pilgrim here. Lord, do not hide your word from me. 
but you have to seek it. You know why I'm studying vehemently? My wife was studying vehemently because we want to die to the things of this world more and more. So if everything is taken away from us, will it hurt? Come on. Of course, we enjoy what we have. But if it's taken away, it's not going to kill us. We're not going to go crazy over it. Amen. Hello? If you have a tornado right to your house, I mean, you're going to say, oh, God, everything in my house. But if you're planted on Jesus, you say, Lord, it's yours. And did not we go through that a few years ago? Yes. About 20-something years ago, my wife and I were awoke or awakened to knock on the door. It was a, it was a fire, uh, a fireman, the fireman. And they told us that there's a fire down the block and it's spreading. And so we had to get out of our house. We went across the street and the houses were like, I think it was like they 10 houses down. Mm -hmm. they connected, right, they're connected. Row houses. They're row houses. Cool. About 10 houses down, the fire started. And one by one, we saw them getting on fire. There were 256 firefighters out there. Now listen, watch this. And, and finally, as it was coming close to where we were, I said, Lord, our studio is there. Everything is there. And anxiety began to rise in my heart a little bit. And finally, I said, you know what, Lord? It's yours. It's not mine. You want to take it. And sure enough, fire came upon the roof of the house, and they started pouring water into the house. And we just stand there, and I'm saying, okay, Lord, you have everything under control. Now, watch this. Look how God is. While we're there, this man walks up to me and my wife, and he says, excuse me, are you Jeremiah Zantanetti? I said, yes. He says, I'm from Allstate. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm from Allstate. Here's a check. He gave me a check before the fire was out. He said, this is just to keep you until. And then he put us in the most expensive place up in Westchester. I, I forgot the name of it, but most, you know, a lot of basketball players go there. And we, we had a ball being there for two months. They took care of us. But this is the best part. When this happened... And we, the fire finally cooled down. They turned off, you know, they turned off all the electricity. We, we went into the house and the studio was dry. Mm -hmm. There was little waters here and there, but the studio itself was not destroyed. Man. You see, God said, no, I've given you that. I will preserve it even in the midst of fire. But we were not sleeping. We gave it up to the Lord. We were willing to. So one more thought. Time should not be slept away to the neglect of the affairs of life, nor of the corners of the immortal soul and a future state, meaning don't fall asleep when you know you have things to do. There's a life affair that you have to deal with and be concerned for your soul, for the future state of it. Men should not be slothful or women and things temporal or spiritual. We have to keep our minds attentive to everything that we do. Go, Rick. Wow. That's so awesome. You know, God God is, is one that preserves. But here we, we're talking still about poverty that can come upon us. And so just going back to Proverbs 6, 11, so your poverty will come like an approaching Prowler walks and your need like an armed man. So this commentary for for this verse of scripture really really caught my eye. So I just wanna I just wanna read it. And Proverbs come and this is coming from Pro, Proverbs twenty four, which is one of the reference scriptures that was connected to this scripture. The lazy man does not plow when the winter planting season arrives mm. so he begs at the next harvest and has nothing to reap wow a farmer who is too lazy to plow and to sow at the right moment will have no harvest his excuse for not plowing is that it is winter you ever hear people like that Oh, I can't do that now because it's too cold. I can't do that right now because it's too hot. He does not like to expose himself to the cold and wet winter weather. In his pleasant warmth and dry farm, it is much more pleasant. The slugger will always find an excuse to cover up his laziness in that way. 
He does not think that he is a slugger, but thinks that all circumstances are against him. You ever hear people like that? Oh, I can't do that because this. I can't do that because that is in the way. So this character is a characteristic for all who want to have harvest, possessions, or money without making an effort for it. They want to have results without the efforts. The whole attitude of a slugger makes clear that he lives for today while he doesn't care about the future. The Bible says in Galatians 6, 9, the wise man works with a view to the future. And in 2 Timothy 4, 2, it says he is continually working in season and out of season. So have you ever heard that scripture? Mm. When you say, uh, I can't do that today. My husband always quotes that scripture to me. You in season or out of season? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm out of season right now. No, that's not what that means. In season or out of season. Do it. Whether you want to, whether you don't Insistent. want to, you got to push through. <laughs> because, the, because the slugger failed to plow, he will have nothing in the harvest. When you don't, when you don't study the word of God, you will not have anything to bring forth. You will not have a, 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 um, a word to, to bring to others. He will then have to beg help from those who did make efforts and have harvest. Mm. He is not ashamed of that. People who are lazy and therefore suffer lack also think that others will take care of them. They have no vision about the future or any feelings of shame. But those to whom the slugger asks for help know him and send him away empty handed. This is an agreement with the word of Paul. If anyone is not willing to work, then he is not to eat either. Mm, 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 mm. Wow. <laughs> you want to comment on that before I go on? No, go ahead. Go on. Okay. So here the, the son should realize that poverty will come like a vagabond. You know what a vagabond is? He has no course or direction he's like a nomad but <clears throat> excuse me but steadily continues his way such a poverty causes lack but you know what a vagabond is is got is a person who's bound in a bag <laughs> who's bound in a bag who's bound in a bag and an armed man is a bandit who is looking for a way to overpower him that's what that scripture is saying mm -hmm. Each generation needs to hear these words about the slugger. You know why? Because it's something that we see a lot of in this present generation. And it's, it's amazing. More and more young people in particular, they slide deeper into this meaningless lifestyle, having no real purpose or plan, although God has a purpose and plan for them. Oh, yes, he does. Just wanting to, I just want to hang out, have fun. Okay, and what does what happens from there? They do nothing. They end up doing nothing. Well, you know what? A uh, a rabbi says something that I'm sure took note because I heard it, and I'm sure many others. You know, you find a person, hey, how you doing? He says, well, you know, I'm just sitting around killing time. He said, you're not killing time. Time is killing you. Mm. Time is killing us if we don't do anything with it. Sometimes we're so busy, we have to say, wait, we got to slow down because sometimes. We need to spend more time with God than we need to do uh, rather than being always doing in the kingdom because we can. We can become, you know, busy people like that. Don't forget that spending time with God is the most important part of your day. Amen. You know, they people, not, not only young people, but particularly young people are, are saying today, I want to be an entrepreneur. Ooh, yeah. Go ahead. I want my own business. I don't want to work for the man. Okay, so what's the plan? And though they may have a plan, the plan is not worked out. Mm. And they, do, they end up doing nothing but, again, hanging out mm. and having fun. And this goes for grown-ups, too. We're, not just, we're just not talking about young people here. Grown-ups fall into this category as well. Laziness becomes a habit. Mm. We see that in society. We also see that in the kingdom of God. There are lazy Christians 
Every free evening is for yourself. We are not against you relaxing or us relaxing or winding down for the day. Mm-hmm. All of that is good. We do it ourselves because we work hard. Yeah. But guess what? You know who worked harder? Jesus on the cross. Mm. Nice. He went through a whole lot more than we have for us to say, oh, I'm deserving of this. I need to do this. I work hard at this. You know, there's something as as we close for today. My husband, my husband always tells us, um, you know, we're on. Of course, he leads worship at our church and, and I'm on the worship team. And a lot of times, you know, you don't feel well and everything like that. And you go, you know what? I'm not going to sing today because of my throat and this and that or whatever. And 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 he has told many of us, including me, if you if you're in church, if you're well enough to come to church, then you're well enough to get up there and lift up your hands and just worship the Lord. Lip sync if you have That's to. That's right. OK, because I don't see any wounds on your hands and feet and a crown of thorns upon your head. <laughs> yes. OK, so if you could come to church, the, the only way you're not going to sing on our worship team, if you don't come to church. That's right. And, you know, you know that's I, the only way, yeah. because other than yeah. that. Yeah. We have to get up there, whether we mm-hmm. feel well or not. Sit down. You don't feel well. Your back hurts. Sit down and sing. That's right. Get a chair, but get up there and sing. And I said, if you can't, you you say I can't sing today too much. Then sing what you have. Use what you have to sing. And if you want to pull back a little bit, fine. But worship God because that's what it's all about. And I remember, you know, I can say that. I remember one time. I it was on a, a Monday. I I I ate something. And I got serious food poisoning. You remember that? And I said, oh, God, oh, God, this thing is, 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 it was just deteriorating me. That following Sunday, I was up there and I was hoping that I didn't, it, it didn't come out of me, if you know what I mean. And still, the next week, I was still sick for eight days. And then I went to the hospital. My wife told me that she never saw me like that. You see... God expects you to do what you can do when you, he knows that you can do it. Mm. Oh, man. Listen, we love you. And remember, you have to, to, if you can, go today, look at a sluggard. <laughs> Those little things that they go real slow. They don't even have a, a shell. They got this mucus a over sloth, them. A sloth. A sloth. A sloth. It's, it's, yeah, slog, a a slug. sloth. Yeah, sloth. Sorry. Thank you. Thank you for the correction. And so get away from that, that life and live an energetic, full, and free life for Christ. But you know what, I uh, about a sloth? <laughs> I know we're supposed to be going off now. <laughs> but you know what about a sloth? But even a sloth, God has given the ability to do something. That's right. They even a plants. sloth, they, they okay? <laughs> but we don't want to be sloths. We want to be like an ant. Amen. All right, so God bless you, and until we meet again, <laughs> shalom. shalom.